What's going on everybody? My name is Isaac Tahongo. I'm a photographer and web video producer. In this video, let's talk Canon 85mm and the response video to Peter McKinnon's 85mm, the king of B-roll. Now, I want to take a moment to discuss this because the 85mm is actually one of my favorite lenses. Not only that, a lot of portrait photographers will say that this is a go-to lens because it flattens out that image and makes everybody's faces look amazing. But they also say that about the 35mm and the 50mm and you know, everybody has their opinions. People will want what they want to believe. However, I would like to give a response in terms of video because I've used this lens for video and a little bit of the photography side. Now, when it comes to the 85 millimeter that I have versus the one that Peter McKinnon has, the only differentiation is that 1.4 and that image stabilization. And although those are two different factors, the big thing that I want to focus here is on the 85 millimeter focal length factor. Not only that, but we'll focus on some of the big points that he makes out throughout his video and which he wants to highlight. So things like fast aperture and the fact that this is a much lighter lens than the 7200 that he originally had to carry around. That beautiful melted pancake look and that compressed look. Um, and in terms of focusing, we'll be also focusing on that the 85 millimeter 1.8. Does it hunt for focus and image stabilization? And of course, the comparisons of who he suggests this to. Overall, I want to focus on that. So let's get started. Oh, that hurt. Oh, geez. Okay. Ow. Did you get that? <laughs> uh, yeah, so right now we're in the woods. The woods of San Jose. There's a fire going on. We're doing this content for you guys, y'all guys. And, you know, you're asking yourself, you're, you're a beginner, you want to upgrade to a lens, and you're questioning and you're really taking Peter's advice into consideration. You know, he's a really great content creator. We're going off-road right now, off-road. And you're thinking like, okay, 1.8, 1.4, doesn't really make a difference. It's one third stop difference. And that can be a really big thing when it comes to especially low light. Uh, maybe you like to do like the Brandon Waffle style or Brandon Waffle style or whatever. I don't know, whatever floats your boat, right? Um, but it's not just, that that comes into mind when you're buying a 1.4 versus a 1.8 you also have to think about the level of engineering that went into making the 1.8 versus the 1.4 you know the 1.4 has that beautiful red ring that we all love but also the amount of aperture blades that a 1.8 versus a 1.4 has you can see it on here the details that i've decided to drawn up but you also have to take into mind your own personal shooting style. When it comes to 1.8, your field of focus that you have with your depth of field, that's a, say that three times fast, um, becomes much different. So your 1.4, you're gonna have a much narrower depth of field so you can get that stuff in focus. So for me, when I came down to it, not only was it a price difference, but it was like, you know, I'm gonna be limited at 1.8, especially when I'm shooting video that I might not want that 1.4 i always want to shoot 1.4 and that could bite you in the butt later you know you check your video stuff and the 1.4 you decided to shoot it because it looks nicer but at the same time it might come, it might come out so think about that when you're shooting it and take that into mind so that's one of the boxes that we want to check out so now we're gonna really focus on that compression that melted pancake look that he talked so much about and that's one of the big factors that you get when it comes to a longer length. It happens naturally due to the laws of physics. The longer the length, the more compressed your background looks. That's why faces look so naturally well put together. And when it comes to these lenses that are really well focused, really narrow, one of the big things to keep in mind is composition. When it's compressed, you get a whole bunch of new ideas and a bunch of new compositions. You shouldn't just be shooting dead center. In terms of filmmaking, uh, this allows you to have a more narrow look. It tells your audience, yes, focus on this. But right now we have two of our beautiful models. And they're the ones that are gonna help me demonstrate this really compressed look and what it brings to the table. And are you, are you, are you watching the video right now and thinking to yourself, man, this guy really doesn't have any friends. Yeah, I'm shooting my hydro flask. Yeah, I'm shooting that mug. Does it matter? Not really. But as you can tell, uh, by the examples that are put on here uh, there's a lot of little distraction that goes on in the background this is great when you're taking a, someone's headshot 
it'll still look like there's a whole bunch of bokeh going on in the background in the background and their noses and everything on their eyes or on their face will look really well put together i would personally never shoot anybody with like a 14 millimeter lens and that's because everything looks really wide if you've ever used your kit lens like your 18 to 55 you'll notice that right away so there's some examples but let's move on to the next thing that he decided to talk about which is uh this whole idea of image stabilization now personally oh geez <laughs> oh that shit that hurt <laughs> that's still gonna uh so <laughs> shit man <laughs> silicon valley can't fit can't fix potholes um fell in a pothole so we had to <laughs> cut that but uh let's talk about image stabilization now that's also one of the big things that you're paying for when it comes to the 1.4 and the 1.8. Image stabilization uh, is really up to date on that 85 1.4 and I have heard great things about Canon's IS. I personally cannot give you like an experience on it because I don't think I have the right lenses. I've only had two lenses in my personal experience that have used IS, that's 24 to 105 uh mark one and the kit lens and i personally don't think those are great examples for something like this however image stabilization comes in very handy both in video and in photo uh, you can see up here this is the amount of uh, f-stops that it allows you for shakiness now uh, we're gonna move on to one of the big things which is the hunt for focus you know when you're doing video when you're doing photo you don't want your camera to be hunting for focus. Now, when it comes to the 85-1.4, um, personally, I have little issue with uh, the 85-1.8 hunting for focus. And that, it's not just the lens, it's also the camera body, dual pixel raw built into it. So it doesn't really hunt for focus. Uh, when it comes to uh, images, and when I'm still on a, a good shutter speed, um, but when it comes to video, uh, I noticed that it also doesn't have any problems with hunting for objects. Once it's locked on, it's gripped on there tight. However, I do personally like to use manual focus when it comes to my lenses in video. And having that limitation of 1.8 has been really great for me. Uh, like I said in a few seconds ago, it really comes down to your shooting style. And if I were to have a 1.4, I know I would personally miss my shots more often than not if I had a 1.8. So who does he suggest this lens to? First and foremost, for event photographers, portrait photographers, he suggests this to them. And that's because of the specialty that this does, compressing that background, making that face look good. And I can't disagree with him on that. For video makers, he also suggests it, but warns that maybe the vlogger should hold off on it. And that's because this is a very big specialty lens. You know, it goes in and out of the bag when it's needed and I can't disagree with him on that either. However, I would like to chime in and say where I think you should buy this in your range of things. Should you buy it first, second, third, fourth, you know? When it comes to photography, as a portrait photographer, I really suggest this either being your third lens or your second lens, maybe behind that 35 millimeter or that 24 to 70. And that's because when I, what I notice is that people always ask for that blurry background. Can you make that blurry background? And you know, an iPhone can do that. However, a beautifully put together piece of glass cannot be beaten by an iPhone. So that's why I would personally suggest this. However, a landscape shooter, I would probably not suggest this lens at all. And that's because there's a 135 F2 and there's a 70 200 F4 for about the same price range, maybe just a smidge more. And that's because you don't always need that F1.8 when you're out there shooting like a landscape. Maybe you're astrophotography, but that's a different story. Maybe consider a 20 uh, F1.4, link up there. You can, you can check out my review. Um, but let's also talk about video makers. Do I suggest this for video makers? And I would, but it wouldn't even be in my single digits of gear. Why? Because you have to focus on audio. You have to focus on lighting. You have to focus on special effects. You have to focus on a whole bunch of other things when you're making a film. However, it is a specialty lens and that's because I want the audience focus right here. Overall, would I suggest this lens? Yes. And do I agree with it being the king of B-roll? Yes, it does a great job, but not every single individual needs it. Look what you're doing, look how it works, see if it'll be beneficial to you. 
and that's it you know it's your money at the end of the day buy whatever you want but those are my opinions that's my response thank you so much for your time and your attention and i'll catch you in the next one